I've heard around town. <laughs> uh, you've got some elusive secrets to creating instantly Ooh, better mixes. Elusive <laughs> secrets, yes, yes. Do yes. uh, you think you could shed a little light on that for you us? You know, I guess I should, actually. Um, it's interesting because the um, what I did early in, in 2012, I was on sabbatical. And what I did is I went around and I interviewed all my heroes, all the, uh, all the producers and engineers and artists and mix engineers uh, that I look up to. Um, and I got some amazing, amazing tips from these guys. And a lot of it, you know, is stuff that you've, you've probably already been thinking about. But just to hear them uh, talk about what it is they do day to day that makes their stuff better is an amazing, uh, helpful thing. And I put a lot of this into the, the class that I wrote um, last year, the, the music producer, uh, music production from pre-production to final audio master, which is the only class that takes about as long to take it as to say it, which is an amazing, <laughs> an, an amazing distinction about that class. But anyway, okay, so let me just spit some of these out. Sure. Um, uh, Tom Lord Algae, uh, who's, you know, his mixing credits just go on and on and on and on. Um, one of those guys that uses compression, him and his brother Chris, both are known for their really in-your-face, you know, really compressed pop mm -hmm. uh, and rock mixes. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the tips that he has that, that uh, is, I think, it, it, it really valuable and it's something, again, that, that I, I've been doing before, but since he said it out loud to me, um, which is in the, the interview in this course, it, it really made a lot of sense and it, and it, and it just uh, strengthened my resolve to, to try this and it, and it works so well. Um, first off, don't compress the two bus, hardly at all. Just a little bit, just kiss it. Just kiss it. Don't go compressing the stereo mix a lot. Mm -hmm. He hardly, hardly touches that at all. Even though his mixes sound, you know, like they're they're doing a lot of compression. Mm -hmm. um, what he does is a lot of compression on individual tracks. Okay. And by a lot of compression, I mean he spanks it pretty hard. <laughs> I mean, you know, he he uses the term full spank a lot to mean like the gain reduction is going way, way down. However. He does it with very, very low ratios, like in, you know, not eight to one or not four to one even, barely even two to one. Sometimes two to one, but a lot of times 1.5 to one. So a lot of gain reduction, a lot of compression, but at very, very low ratios. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the first tip. I mean, if, you, if you're after that kind of sound, that kind of pop sound where there is a lot of compression, and that's, that's problematic. You know, compression takes a long time to really feel your way into, and, and I have a lot of students who, who use a lot of compression up front and, and they don't really have their, their sea legs yet. They don't really have the chops to pull it off, and it mm -hmm. sounds like it. And compression is one of those places where you can kind of get into a lot of trouble if you, uh, if you don't really know what you're doing. So start out by, first off, just not compressing the two, the, the, the stereo bus, hardly at all. Um, compress individual tracks, but try doing it with low ratios. Try doing it with, with fairly low ratios. So that's, that's number one. Um, a second tip that I got that I just love uh, was from uh, Gustavo Seles, who is a fabulous mixer in Miami. Um, he's, he's done tons and tons of work in the Latin market um, and uh, it worked with Shakira for, for many, many albums as her, as her main engineer and mixer. Um, his mixes sound amazing. He had a great suggestion on mixing bass, on, on how to get bass to speak, especially how to get bass to cut through the mix and speak on small speakers. And let's face it, unfortunately, we live in a world where people listen to music through their laptops yep. all the time. And we just got to face it, you know, we audio engineers and producers, we don't have to like it, you know, <laughs> but that's just the truth. It is just the truth. Um, and in order to get the bass, the bass guitar, uh, to actually speak, in a less than ideal situation like that, or even just to speak in a mix where maybe it's not cutting through. Um, the tip that Gustavo has, and he does this on every mix, is distortion. He actually distorts the bass. And he demonstrated this for me in his studio, um, and it's, it's pretty remarkable. 
um, he'll he'll kind of molt the bass. He'll have he'll have the, uh, the 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 signal that's not being distorted, the, the clean signal. But then he'll he'll distort he'll send it out and he'll distort it and then he'll bring it up on another fader. And it is pretty interesting how a little bit of distortion, um, which basically messes with the overtone series mm -hmm. of the bass, will actually let it speak out of smaller speakers and let it speak in a way that it wouldn't speak otherwise even in you know if you're listening on on great headphones or on on large speakers um i do this all the time now and you know a little dabble do you you can overdo it you know so yep. it's not like you know we're not talking about putting a muff tone on, on right. your bass and you know i mean you, you might like that sound you know you in some cases you might want to do that but a little bit of distortion i actually like there's a very unsung Underutilized uh, uh, plug-in uh, in, in Pro Tools mm -hmm. uh, called Maxim, mm -hmm. um, and that plug-in it's a compressor. It's a compressor, but it does it distresses the signal. It's a little bit like the distressor, the hardware box, sure. the distressor. Um, I find that that that's a really nice tool to distort the bass a little bit. Um, and uh, you know a little bit will do you, but boy, it it really is amazing. It's a real magic bullet to kind of get that bass to speak out of smaller speakers. So, so that's, that's another thing. Um, the third thing I would say, and this is probably you know, more important than the other stuff, is that less is more. The, the best thing, uh, the, the best tool at your disposal when you go to mix a record is the mute button. Uh, <laughs> I, I firmly <laughs> believe that. And you know, the problem with most mixes is that you're trying to cram you know, 100 pounds of stuff into a 50 pound mm -hmm. bag. And actually backing off, going ahead and making some of the hard decisions that, you know what, the guitar, the, we're not going to have six guitars sure. in the chorus, you know. We're going to have four guitars, or we're going to have two guitars in the verse, and then we're going to switch to these other two guitars in the chorus and go back and forth, rather than have all four of them in all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, making some space. Space is, is so important, and it's, and it's the first thing to kind of go out the window. I like to be an advocate for space sure. uh, in my records, and, and uh, I know Rick Rubin sometimes calls himself a music reducer rather than a music producer <laughs> because he feels like he's the guy that comes in and says, "Look, you got to get rid of this and get rid of this and get rid of this," and you know, and now, okay, now it's a record. Now it actually sounds like a record. So those three things. So so try when you're compressing things, back off of the stereo bus. Uh, leave that for the mastering engineer. Um, maybe just kiss it a little bit there, but try low ratios, uh, but higher gain reduction on, on individual tracks. Try distorting the bass a little bit to get it to speak some more, and, and then just try and thin some stuff out, man. Um, Einstein famously said that any, any fool can make things more complicated, um, but it takes a real genius to move in the other direction and try to simplify things. So, so those, are, those are my three, three tips of the day for instantly better mixes.